Okay, good morning everyone. Happy Friday. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you again for joining our session. Uh, the, every Friday, this is our Every Friday we do these live training sessions on everything modern workplace related. So Office 365, Microsoft 365. Today is going to be no exception. Ryan, can I get you to advance to the next slide, slide please? Hope everyone's got a nice cup of coffee with them, sitting down and comfortable and ready to learn a little bit about shifts in Microsoft Teams. This is a a newer app that's been uh, that was released for Microsoft Teams specifically a few years ago. Ryan, my colleague, is going to dive into the details of this application, how it's used, how it works on mobile. So there's a lot of really cool things here that I'm personally excited about, excited about, and I hope you are too. Ryan, can I get you to advance to the next slide? For those who are new to this to these webinars, my name is Alex Henry. I am the software training specialist at Clear Concepts, and uh, my colleague Ryan uh, Balik is doing the uh, presentation today on um, on shifts. So, what we do on top of these webinars is we also um, do a weekly webcast called the Mobo Show which is everything on the Modern Workplace program. Ron, can I get you to advance to the next slide, please? And I'll apologize for advance if I sound a little stuffy. It's allergy season and it's just hitting me like a punch in the face today. So apologize if my voice is a little muffled or a little unclear if you hear me sniffling a lot. So just a little, little just a fun little plug on our weekly webcast. This is where Ryan and I sit down and we just talk about everything Microsoft, 3, Microsoft 365. We talk about the Modern Workplace program and how you can take these tools from Microsoft using your, your Office 365 credentials and getting the most out of things like Microsoft Teams, Excel. Today's example is shifts. So we talk about all these things on this on this weekly webcast we do, which is published on YouTube. So we do have a YouTube channel and we do post it on a website. So you can find all of our episodes at moo.show. Uh, Ryan, I'll get you to advance to the next slide. Just some quick housekeeping. We record these sessions for you. So if you have to slip out for work or a phone call or anything life related, that is OK. You will be able to view this recording, the entire session on YouTube later this, later this afternoon. We will send out a link to all the to everyone that's registered, but you'll be able to find it later once we post it onto the Clear Concepts blog as well. Additionally, this is an interactive session, so if you have questions, there is a Q&A module. You can see the little uh, icon with the question marks. This is where you can submit questions to us privately. We will answer them in the back end. I'll be running the back, answering your questions, and anything that seems like it might be relevant to the group or really high up there, we'll publish it publicly so everyone can benefit from that question. Throughout the session, we'll also just answer a few questions that are really topical for the for the um, time as well. If there is a ton of questions and we are running short on time, Ryan and I typically stay a bit late to finish up any remaining questions. So if you asked a question and didn't get it answered right away, please stick around and let us know that you're still waiting for a reply and we'll do our best to get our answer to you before we close off today's session. Ryan, I'll get you to advance to the next slide, please. Lastly, uh, we would love to get your feedback. These sessions are for you. They're not for Ryan and I's personal entertainment. We do these because um, we want to help you get the most out of your Office 365 subscriptions or help you learn a bit more about the, these Microsoft products so that way you can take them back to your offices, share them with your colleagues and your managers um, and take your work to the next level. So if there's anything you want to learn, please let us know. There is, um, you can go to clearconcepts.ca slash webinar feedback, fill out a very quick, easy to fill out form that will just ask you your name is and what you want to know. So please, please, please 
fill it out. Let us know what type of topics you want to learn about in the future so we can add them to our webinar schedule and help you learn a bit, maybe a bit more about Teams, learn a bit more about Microsoft Planner or any other Microsoft products or features that you've been curious or interested in about. Uh, Brian, I'll get you to advance to the next slide. This is where I hand it off to Mr. Ryan, who will take it on from here and talk about the agenda and lead us into the demo as well. All right, thank you, Alex. Thank you very much for the intro and the housekeeping, getting that all put together for everybody. Again, welcome uh, again, another Friday morning, uh, beautiful morning in Winnipeg. So we're happy to have you here along for the next hour or so. All right, so today we're going to cover Microsoft Shifts. And, and again, this is part of Microsoft Teams. If you have been following along and keeping the score with Microsoft 365 or Office 365, you may remember something called Staff Hub formerly. Uh, it was included in a number of Office 365 business subscriptions. Microsoft has since ditched the Staff Hub branding, uh, the second app that you needed to use to have Staff Hub, and they've brought it all into Microsoft Teams, which makes a lot of sense, uh, and into the Microsoft Teams desktop and mobile apps as well. And so that's labeled now as Shifts. So today, uh, I just want to sort of riff a little bit on the death of paper-based schedules. We'll talk about getting our shift together and basically look at the building blocks and planning shifts for your employees or your team. We'll look at the employee experience, basically what they can expect or what they would see on their side. We'll look at ma what managers would see or what team leads would see, and we'll talk about the approval process for time off, uh, vacations, shift swapping, those types of things. And then we'll do our best to give uh, demos of both the web interface and the mobile interface. And again, as Alex mentioned, we will wrap up. We will take your questions throughout the session and we will stay a little past the hour if we need to address anything additional. So again, please keep your questions coming in the Q&A module as we work through today's material. All right, so uh, let's start off. Uh, this gentleman here, his name's Bob. Uh, he really likes paper-based schedules. He likes tacking things to the uh, bulletin board, the cork board in the employee staff room. Here we see there's a meeting coming up on Friday. We got some training coming up in November. Looks like there's a, a company newsletter he's pulled up. And on the top center there, we see the team schedule. So maybe he's assigned different shifts, um, different schedules, different allotments to different employees, maybe for a week, maybe for a month at a time. And he's tacked that up on the back bulletin board in the in the break room. And this is OK. We've been doing this for, for a long, long time. And I'm sure some of you have gone through uh, different stages in your career, different roles, different uh, types of employers that have done this before, but there's certainly a better way and there's certainly, it's, a, it's certainly a good time to ditch this paper-based scheduling. I know um, from my own experience when we used to do this, employees would use their smartphone, take a picture of this and, and then they would have that uh, on their smartphone, they would have that on their own device to see when they were working. Um, Swapping shifts was a real rigmarole because every time something changed, you'd have to print out another copy of this thing, run down to the break room, tack it up, and then everybody's got that saved picture now that is obsolete. So there is a way to digitally transform this process, and that is through Microsoft Shifts, and we'll go through the different building blocks today. So let's start by getting our shift together. Um, First off, I want to call out that it is a little bit tricky to find shifts in Teams. Uh, now, down the left-hand side, uh, we do have our app menu. So uh, if you click on the three dots in the More Actions menu, shifts is typically listed in that app menu. And I'll show you a little later on when we get into the live demo, I'll show you how to pin that to your left-hand menu so that it's always there for you and your employees. But again, uh, not there by default, you have to go and find it, but it will be part of your Teams install uh, if you're using it on Windows or be part of the web app as well. Quick mention of the building blocks uh, to a shift, 
to a, a team schedule, if you will. At the very, very bottom, sort of the foundation is a team. So we're, we're very, very used to using teams and teams. As you create new teams, as you create different cross-functional teams or all employee teams, um, Shifts is automatically going to make a space for those teams to have team schedules in the Shifts app. Building up from that, we have schedule groups. And these are groups of employees, or this is the ability to add groups of employees uh, where you may have different areas of work. Maybe you have a front office staff or a back of the house staff. Maybe you have a warehouse uh, group and a front office or a sales team, or uh, maybe there are different ways that you want to break out AM shifts and PM shifts. So the sky's the limit and your imagination is the limit there is the limit there as well. Uh, but there is the ability to segregate groups by role, by department, by sub department, however you want to. On top of schedule groups, we have open shifts and we have unassigned shifts. So these are the actual time chunks, if you will, or the 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 actual shifts, the, the times that people will be working. Uh, open shifts are available for any employee to go and grab. And again, we have a really strong approval process uh, baked into shifts. And unassigned shifts are the ones that are just out there. Um, maybe you don't assign them to named colleagues or named um, employees on your on your team. But, uh, but instead you go and create a, a bulk number of shifts and anyone can go and grab the shifts that they want. Inside of each shift, we have what are called shift slots. So if you have, let's say, uh, an office group and you have nine to five shifts, but you need five people to be there, rather than making five individual shifts, you make what are called slots. And that basically lets you duplicate uh, a shift to the appropriate number that you need to staff up for. As well, each shift has breaks and we'll show you how to develop uh, paid and unpaid breaks and how long employees can expect to have for a break. We have shift notes. So if you want to leave your teammates certain notes uh, and as well as shift activities, if you want them to get specific things done, we can do that as well. And I'm just going to give the questions here a quick check. Alex, anything so far? Nope, we're good to go. All right, let's move along. So here's a quick look at the abilities to add a shift and again some of those things that we've mentioned um, we have the the time of the shift we have different color coding if we want to add uh, different colors to categorize shifts we have our slots we have our time uh, we can label our shifts if we want so we want to label again a uh, variety of different roles or tasks the variety of departments that the shift could apply to we have the uh, break here. So right now it's set to zero minutes. We have our shift notes and we have our shift activities and that's kind of like a to-do list for this particular shift. All right, this is basically what a shift schedule looks like when it's all filled out. So we can see this is a week view of uh, the fleet operations team and they have a variety of shifts. They have some that are open, some that are already assigned. You can see that we have two groups. We have a workshop group and we have a warehouse group and different employees, different members of each of those groups. And you can see we've color coded a few things. We've added some shift notes. Uh, we've added breaks you can see by the coffee mug here. Uh, and then as well, we've added some, some slots which are denoted by uh, the, the multiplier number here. This, uh, this will indicate if there are multiple shifts or sorry, multiple slots open for a shift. So let's move along to the employee experience. Again, when an employee logs in, it's going to be a different view from what managers would see or what the team owners in teams will see. They will be able to see open shifts and shifts that are assigned to them. They're not going to see all of that other stuff and all of the other planning. 
So you can see here in this view on screen now, uh, we see that uh, Deborah has logged in. She can get some details on some of the open shifts in the warehouse. See, she can see the shift notes here. It happens to be pick orders, and she can see that she would be allotted a 30 minute break, so she can go ahead and request this shift. So again, this is the view from the web, from the web interface or for the Teams app for Windows. Uh, it'll look a little bit different on mobile, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Again, as I mentioned, really strong approval workflow built into shifts here. Uh, this is an example of a request for time off. You can set your start date, end date. Maybe you need a half day. Maybe you need a, a few hours just to, to run for an appointment. We do have a reason picker and we do have notes as well. Again, this saves an email. This saves um, some of the other tools. Maybe you have a legacy tool for time off requests. Um, this is all baked into Teams, really handy. As well, this is the same place we go to swap shifts with colleagues. Um, maybe we don't want to work on the weekend and we have a colleague that would rather work on the weekend and have some weekdays off or have a long weekend. We can go ahead and make those shift swaps here in the web app and in the mobile app as well. And uh, don't don't worry, all the managers out there, don't worry. You you will be informed when your staff want to swap shifts, and you will have the final say on those uh, shift swaps. As well, we have kind of the other side is where we can, as an employee, offer our shifts to other colleagues. And again, that's all done through the requests panel. All right, here's a quick look at the mobile interface. Again, we'll get to a live demo on a real Android smartphone in just a little while, uh, but you can see here in this example what you get when you log into the Teams app and then go into the shifts category. We can see requests, open shifts, and we do have the time clock, and we will cover the time clock a little later on because uh, that's a very popular, uh, very frequently requested uh, feature to bring a time clock and sort of an interesting note on the time clock is you can set a GPS uh, location. You can have the app grab a GPS location of your employees when they clock in just to make sure that they're at the right place at the right time, if you know what I mean. As well, on the left hand side, you can see this employees logged in through their phone. So they see all of their shifts that are upcoming. So they've got some floor shifts. They've got some closing shifts. And then on the right hand graphic, we can see those requests. The request interface looks a little bit different on mobile. So we can see we are looking to swap a shift and uh, we are still waiting on the team member response. OK, quick look at the management and approval side of things. Again, uh, this first screen grab here is of the settings that we would get as a team owner in the shifts module in Teams. Again, we can set our time zone and we have to pick the closest uh, major city to, to our operation just for time zone reasons. We can set the start of the day if we like. We can um, copy shifts, which I'll show you is a really nice um, way to build out schedules very, very quickly. If you have the same number of jobs and positions that you need to fill uh, shifts for each and every week or each and every month. And you can uh, note here if you want the shift activities to come over when you copy those shifts. Open shifts uh, allow employees on the team to view and request open shifts on the schedule. Again, if you pick and choose employees for schedules, uh, you may want to turn this off, but if you rather you would just set the number of, of tasks that you need to be done, set the number of shifts, set the capacity for employees that you need and, and let them kind of pick and choose and first come first serve kind of model, you would want to keep this setting on here. Uh, last on this slide, we've got our requests and again, uh, Microsoft's provided the ability here to keep this customize or to keep this pretty flexible so you can set different uh, types of custom requests for time off. So out of the box, we get sick day, unpaid leave, parental leave, vacation or just time off. Um, again, you can add custom options and you can change the icons uh, if you'd like just to to keep things more relevant for your team. All right, and this is uh, some of the time clock setup. And again, do you want to include location detection? Uh, when your uh, colleagues sign in from their phone and clock in or clock out, 
where we, you can set coordinates. Uh, maybe it's your headquarters, maybe it's a branch office, what we have to do there. Um, again, completely optional. This is off by default. This is something that you need to turn on if you do want to record that. And certainly we'll want to let your employees know that you are uh, grabbing their GPS location. All right. One other thing we can do as a manager or as a team owner is we can export um, our timesheets for each, in each individual employee. This can be helpful if you're using a payroll service, um, if you farm out payroll, but all you need to do is submit your timesheets, for example. Uh, here you'll get a report with each employee, their clock in, clock out times their shift times. And again, you as a, as a manager, you as a, a team lead can go in here and edit. You can manually add shifts as well. You, you can do what you have to do. It's it's not a perfect science. I will say it's, it's not uh, a fully integrated solution into uh, something like ACPAC or Sage or Simply Accounting or QuickBooks or whatnot. Um, but at least here you can get your time clock and your shift information out of this solution and uh, pass it along down the line, maybe to your bookkeeper or whoever does your payroll, maybe a payroll service as well. So again, that's in here, that's under the settings where you can get to export your time registers. And this is what the requests look like from the management side. Again, uh, in this example, Deborah has put in a vacation for May 26, she needs a day off. And as a manager, we're able to approve or deny. No email, no complicated uh, app that we have to use behind the scenes, no weird third party thing. This is all, again, baked into to Teams um, based on our Office 365 or Microsoft 365 account and our identity. So when an employee leaves, you don't have to worry that they have access to anything. As long as you disable them in Office 365 or Microsoft 365, you can rest easy that they're not getting into a system that they shouldn't be. So again, uh, a manager can give a response until they do. That request will always sit as pending. And again, very easy. Managers are busy. This will pop up as a notification in their Teams app and they can approve or deny whether they're sitting at their desk in front of a PC or whether they're on the go. Again, this will pop up as a notification in the Teams mobile app as well. So. Wherever you are, you can always keep uh, tabs on your employee requests. All right, that's all I've got for the formal uh, presentation. We're going to get now into a live demo, but before we do, I'll just check with Alex. Any burning questions? Uh, one big question is, um, uh, is if shifts is available to ba uh, business basic users, who is who can use shifts? Ah, good, good call. Um, any Office 365 or Microsoft 365 subscription that includes Teams has the ability to use shifts. And a Great. really, really important one there. Uh, just another note. Anyone that knows me, sort of personally or professionally, knows that I love uh, first line workers. I love workers that traditionally don't get a desk, don't get a PC. Uh, I'm really big on enabling these types of workers. Maybe they're servers, maybe they're salespeople out in the field, um, maybe they're back of house staff, right? And they traditionally don't get a PC. Um, you can give these employees a relatively inexpensive few dollars a month Microsoft 365 subscription that includes Teams. You don't even need to give them an email inbox if you don't want to, because again, all of these approval workflows, all of this messaging is handled through Teams. Uh, you can give these types of, of colleagues or, or co-workers um, a lot of flexibility and, and transform a lot of processes. Again, ditching that paper-based schedule on the bulletin board, chances are all of these employees are carrying around a smartphone anyways, so they would have access to put the Teams app on their mobile phone and have all of this rich experience that we're, uh, that we're covering today. All right, thank you, Ryan. Uh, that's it for questions for now, so I'll let you continue on and get into that demo. Great stuff. All right, perfect. Uh, just bear with me here as we jump over to my web browser. So you can see, as usual, uh, we pull up Teams. I'm just pulling this up in the 
uh, in the Chrome web browser, uh, just to show you what the, the web experience is like. If you want to download and install this on, on Windows or Mac, totally okay as well. Now getting to Teams, as I mentioned sort of at the top, is sometimes a little bit tricky. Uh, again, out of the box, these are the icons that uh, Teams loads for us, but we always have the more added apps button here, those three dots on the far left side. So if we click into there, you can see we're going to have all kinds of different things, and it depends what you've done already in Teams, but shifts will always be added here, and uh, it looks like a little time clock, so it's very, uh, it stands out very clearly. So we'll just open this interface here. And here's my quick tip for the day. If you find that your Teams is going to use shifts quite a lot, if you're going to be in this app all the time as, uh, as a team manager, as a team lead, if you right-click on this icon, you can actually pin this now. So this is a newer feature in Teams. You can actually pin this to this bar and shifts will always appear here. Um, in the Windows app, you can actually reorder these icons, but you can't do that on the web app. So at least you can pin it so that it's there as a handy shortcut for you. So again, uh, just a couple other things I wanna focus on here in, in the user interface. Uh, some things that I didn't cover in the static uh, PowerPoint slides. Uh, we do have day notes up at the top here. So here's our here's our week view. Uh, here on the 21st, our management said, all right, focus on training courses if you're slow. Um, today, okay, our corporate VP is coming in. Everybody wants to look sharp, right? Uh, these are notes that you can pass along to your teammates as they apply for a whole uh, day. In the individual shifts here, again, we've got our group. So we've got our workshop group. We can see how many hours are outstanding for the whole group. We've got our warehouse group. And again, at a glance, we can get some pretty good information. We can see we've got a number of shifts that are open uh, in at least in the warehouse, or sorry, in the workshop group. In the warehouse, we only have a few, but it looks like this manager's gone ahead and assigned a few half day shifts to Adele and Deborah. And then we can see some of the the uh, shift tasks, as I was mentioning. So uh, complete outstanding repair. We can see we've got some breaks. So again, at a glance, pretty capable view here. Some other things around the user interface that I want to show you. If you are managing more than one team, if you're managing schedules for more than one team, uh, we can go and uh, grab those here. We can always create a new schedule for a team that hasn't been using shifts yet. So that's in this hamburger menu here on the top left. We can switch through our weeks. Uh, so here's our week view, and we're going to go ahead and create a new schedule in just a few minutes. We have our requests panel, our settings panel. And then far over on the right, we have a few different views. We have a day view. So if you'd rather see by the hour what's going on, uh, I'm assuming that the week view is going to be the most popular just because it's very easy to, again, at a glance, see what's going on in your business or in your team for the week. We have a month view. And then lo and behold, we actually have a print button. So if you are still stuck and you still want to print this thing out and tack it to the bulletin board, um, I'm not going to judge. You certainly can go here and uh, print this out if you want to. Uh, so maybe you do have some employees that don't have a smartphone or you don't want to uh, give access to to teams on their smartphone uh, rest assured you still can print this thing out don't worry as well we've got uh, some filtering if you want to filter by individual employee and see what ta what shifts they've picked up if you want to filter by uh, group in our team in our schedule uh, some options there just to see um, Again, if you're managing a lot of groups and a very, very large team, there's a good way to filter down uh, to find what you're looking for. And as well, we've got some different views so we can see your own shifts, your team shifts. Again, if you're a manager, you'll see this option. Uh, we can view by people or we can view by shifts. It's a little bit different there. Um, this is a little bit, I think, a little bit difficult to follow. Um, but if you are dividing your shifts by certain time blocks, uh, that may be a more helpful view for you. But I prefer to go by people because it's it's easy to, to sort of match up names and faces to the variety of roles that they may uh, they may be accomplishing. Okay. 
as well. Uh, there's always a more options button in Microsoft products. Some interesting things here. If you want to recall uh, a schedule that you shared with your team, you can do so to make changes and push that back out again. Uh, if you want to export or import out to Excel, you can do that as well. Uh, so again, maybe something that you want to save out for archive purposes, maybe something that your payroll processor needs uh, to compare assigned shifts versus actual work shifts, um, some flexibility there, and that does come out uh, in an Excel file. All right. Before we go through and make a new schedule for a week, uh, just one more thing we'll show you here along the requests. Again, I showed you a static view of this uh, in the PowerPoint presentation, but here again, now we've got, uh, we can actually go through and show you what this looks like. So here, Deborah has requested vacation day. And uh, again, very, very easy to respond and approve or deny those requests. Right, easy to add a note, easy to approve it, and it's gone, it's done. Deborah's going to get an alert that her time off has been approved. She's going to be um, sort of vacated from any shifts if she had anything on that day. Uh, so really, really easy to manage these requests. And again, get that out of inbox, get that out of email inboxes, and really reduce that time to uh, to deal with these types of uh, of requests. Okay, so let's go back to the schedule view and let's go ahead and pick up now. Let's go and make a new schedule. Uh, but before we do, I'll just do a quick check. Alex, any questions? Yeah, we just got a couple of new questions, which I'll share with you. Um, can you assign people from one group to another group? Um, this is where workers might shift from one department to another based on just to balance out staffing allocations. Mm -hmm. You can have the same member in multiple groups if you need to. Cool. Yeah, so if uh, if Patty worked sometimes in the workshop, but she also worked in the warehouse, no harm in having her in both places, both groups. Uh, great. Um, and I, I can't remember if you covered this. Is there a way to have uh, repeating schedules in here? or set that up really easily? Uh, yes, you can copy week to week and build out a month and then copy a month to month. If the if the schedule is very static, again, if you always need to have three people in the warehouse, three people in, in the workshop kind of thing, um, you can go ahead and build that out for as long as you want to. Um, you don't have to build it out day by day or week by week. You can build it out for a month. It's very, very easy to to copy and paste. Very easy to highlight a number of days and just bulk edit uh, the shifts that should be in there. And one last question. Do employee requests go in the app in real time? Yes. I mean, there's a there's a few seconds delay, but <laughs> what we would call real time, what we would call real time in in uh, in the sense of Microsoft 365, yes. Great. Um, I'll let you continue on from there and I will continue answering questions in the uh, in the back. OK, perfect. All right, thank you. All right, so let's go now again. Uh, we can advance to our next week and let's just. Toy around here with building out a new schedule for our team, so again, we can start in a couple of different ways. We can start by building up shifts in our open shifts and let our employees, let the teammates pick the shifts that they want, or we can go into individual users and basically assign what we want them to do and when when we want them to work. So let's cover both of those now. Uh, so let's do first scenario, let's build some open shifts. Let's look at next Monday. I'm just gonna click in here. Uh, again, we can set a color code if we want. Uh, if different employees wanna see different colors, you know, again, sky's the limit there. We're going to work uh, an eight to five. That's the default. But maybe we want to work uh, an eight to three. Right? We can we can set our hours here. Again, with the slots, this is the number of employees that you would want to fill this shift. So if you're, um, you know, we got our workshop. If our workshop is open from eight to three, and we always need to have two people in the workshop, 
we're just going to go ahead and create two slots and that just saves us some time from having to copy and paste and and redo this uh, this effort a, a few times again custom labels if you want to label things by specific task by specific role uh, maybe you always need to have one supervisor and one uh, one machinist um, again whatever is going to apply best to your business um, you can use labels for these shifts as well so in this case we'll just leave that blank and then we do have our break time as well uh, it gives it in a few different increments here so uh, maybe in this case we're going to give 60 minutes for lunch and coffee and all those different things and then we can add some shift notes um, fix a standing work order, something like that at a high level. And again, we do have shift activities. If we want to add individual activities, uh, sweep the shop floor, right? We got to keep it tidy. Uh, we can color code these things again. If you have different categories of, of work, maybe um, different employees with different training, uh, different material handling needs different safety needs again whatever works for your particular business you can go ahead and set there you can set the start and end time so okay we figure it's going to take 15 minutes for someone to, sh to sweep the shop floor and is this a paid activity yes or no you can add your breaks in here if you want to uh, for a particular shift really uh, carve things up and say this is what you're doing for these hours you're having your lunch break between this hour and this half hour whatever it happens to be if it's paid if it's not again um, however much detail you want to put into your shifts and into your schedules um, microsoft has given us a pretty flexible system here to to add those notes in so again um, how much ever time you want to spend on this the first time around if you just want to get your shifts in there and track, if you just want people to know when they need to work and you use other methods to let them know what they could be doing. But again, this is a really, really good opportunity to digitally transform uh, some of this communication, some of these uh, activities that we do. OK, so here we've got our shift. We'll go ahead and save it out. And you can see now that we've got in the workshop on Monday two slots for 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. If we wanted to copy this, we can simply copy and paste it into the rest of the week. So that was really, really easy. And you can't see because I don't have a camera, but all I did was simple keyboard shortcuts, control C to copy, highlighted a number of days and pasted that in with control V. And you can always use a uh, right click and uh, use those menus as well. Okay, so now we've got pretty tall orders here for the workshop. We want two slots. We've filled it in for the whole week. Let's look now at the warehouse team. And again, rather than assigning open shifts, uh, and, you, and we'll we'll share this out with the team in just a few seconds, uh, but let's go ahead and let's go to Adele on Monday. We'll double click on her, and maybe we want her to work uh, more of a standard day and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Again, you can see that open shift now has turned off because we've assigned it to Adele. And uh, let's see, in the warehouse, maybe we assign uh, order picking, right? Maybe we assign a role. Maybe she's the safety supervisor for the day. Maybe she's the forklift operator for the day. Whatever it happens to be, again, it's just a clever use of the labels uh, that we can use here in shifts. We'll give her 60 minutes. In this case, I'm not going to add any notes or activities. We've seen that already. We'll go ahead and hit save. You can see that that vacation day that we have approved Deborah shows here and it's kind of grayed out so we can't go and assign her any days there but very very easy to, to copy this take it to a couple more days and paste it uh, very easy to come in here and again right click and add more time off add a shift whatever we want to do maybe we want to unassign this from adele and move it to open shifts again really easy just to right click around and doing what we're doing to, to fill out our schedule so let's just pick a couple more let's uh, let's go and paste a couple more shifts there for Deborah and there we are we have a partially filled out schedule for our team again two different groups workshop group warehouse group we have our members in the group very easy to add members here over on the right 
this will pull from your Office 365 uh, Azure AD identities. So anyone that's already in your company is good to go. All right, so now important thing to do after we've built out, after you built out your schedule, you can see all these little star icons all over these shifts. Uh, the only thing that doesn't have a star icon is Deborah's vacation because we've made that already. We've approved that already. That's been shared with uh, with the system already. Up at the top right, you can see the matching star icon on this button called share with team. And it's really, really important. This is like hitting save as on a document. This is something that you want to get in the habit of doing is once this schedule is built out, um, until we hit share with team, our colleagues are not going to see these shifts in their apps. They're not going to see it in uh, the team's web app, for example. They're not going to see it on their mobile phones. You have to do share with team. And again, we can uh, set the date range or we see the date range that uh, we are making changes to. We see a number of assigned shifts, a number of open shifts, and then we have the ability just to say, all right, let everybody know, let the whole know, let the whole team know that next week, uh, next week's schedule has been posted in the app, or just let the affected teammates know. Uh, in this case, it would be Adele uh, and Deborah because they've got assigned shifts uh, up here in the workshop group because we didn't discreetly assign anything. No one's going to get a notification, but probably best habit is just to let the whole team know that next week's schedule is ready. So we do that. We get a nice banner up at the top that our schedule has successfully been shared. And there we go. Um, in the event that you need to make changes, in the event that you want to come in here and assign people to particular shifts, you certainly can do that. Again, that share with team button is going to light up. And again, look for those star icons, look for those asterisk icons. As you make changes, you have to publish them. You have to save the schedule uh, as it were. Uh, and the teams will automatically notify, again, everyone or just the affected people. All right, uh, I'll take a quick check on questions and then we're going to pull up the mobile side of the story and do a quick look over there. Uh, great, Ryan, before you jump into the mobile side, perhaps you could show how to create those reoccurring shifts because I did have a couple additional questions on that. Um, one to show the process of creating a reoccurring schedule. So mm -hmm. let's say Patty works every Monday in group A and every Monday in group B. Or sorry, every Tuesday in group B mm -hmm. and just show how that how you could just schedule that out for the next month or two months or how like infinitely. Sure. So let's go to a fresh week. Let's go to first week of June. And let's take Patty. So we want Patty to work in the workshop on Monday. So let's just give her a shift really quickly here. So bear with me. And we want her in the warehouse group. I have to add her here. Please bear with me again. All right. And we've got her in both groups. And we can move her around if we want to. We can bring her to the top of that group and we want her here in Tuesday. We want an all day shift. And again, I'm not going to add anything fancy. Maybe we'll just keep it a different color just so we can see her different shifts, right? Now, very easy to copy this schedule and bring it out for, let's say, till the end of the year. And Let's take choose the date range. Oh, sorry. We want to copy this first week of June. And we want to bring it into the second week of June. And there we go. We've copied one week to the next week. So we can see. We've got some shifts. I think I mixed up on the dates there a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, but you can go ahead, even if you wanted to build out a whole month, um, that may be a little bit more efficient rather than going week to week, build out a whole month of those alternating Mondays, Tuesdays. Here we can go and uh, correct my little goofy mistake here. Could you do that, Ryan, for an individual and just say only Patty is going to work every Monday in 
her regular shift and every Tuesday, and that's only going to apply to Patty instead of the entire group. Uh, only in only apply to Patty instead of the entire group. No, you'd have to do it for the whole schedule for the whole team. OK, again, kind of team centric here um, rather than thinking about individual employees. Um, the way this is sort of set up is around a team. Uh, so again, a, a team lead or a team manager has uh, subordinates with, with, within them, within their organization. Um, that's how this is laid out rather than thinking by individual employee. Great, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, one more question. Um, can you show how someone could see the total hours of an employee? Is it grouped by, so could I see all of Patty's hours between the two groups in one place or would I have to see them in each individual group, like the accumulated hours that Patty mm -hmm. is scheduled and worked for? Each individual group. Okay, so it's by group. Yeah, and again, if you want to get away from that, um, rather than using groups, again, groups is optional. You don't need to use it. It's just have one, one master group and use the categories, use the labels and use the color codes. Um, there's some other ways where you can visually and even in text represent, you know, where Patty would be at a particular day or time. Um, rather than using groups, I would say in that case, if you've got employees that are bouncing all over, just have one master group with everybody in it. Uh, and then you'll see the sum of Patty's hours. So you can see here in the month of June, Patty's got 18 hours up here. So you get two uh, nine hour shifts. And then uh, down here in a warehouse, you can see another total of 18 hours. Great. Uh, one more question if you have a moment. Mm -hmm. um, can you show where to see the requested and approved vacation days? Sure. So again, as a team owner, uh, you will have the option here for requests. You can see we can make new requests. So this is what uh, employees or teammates would see. And then uh, as those requests come in, they'll just drop down here on the left. So you can see we've got some in progress and we've got some completed ones. Uh, I'll show you from the mobile side what it looks like in just a few minutes as well. But again, it's always under this requests menu here at the top of the ribbon. Great, that's it for questions. Thank you very much. I'll let you uh, carry on with the mobile, de the mobile demo. All right, all right. Bear with me, folks, for just a minute here. I'm going to bring up my demo phone. And just a quick note, this is an Android phone, but um, anything that I show you here certainly will work on iPhones as well. So it doesn't matter which side of the, which camp you're in, Microsoft's got you covered here with the Teams app and the Shifts add-in. So. Here we go. Oh, looks like we've got some updates. Lovely, thank you. All right, so um, the pop-up actually down at the bottom right-hand side is very, very timely because that's where Microsoft has hidden the Shifts um, app or the Shifts section in the Teams mobile app. So in the same way in the web and desktop experience where we had to go to those three dots and find Shifts, kind of have to do that here in the mobile app as well. So I'm just going to hit that and you see we get this nice tray. You can see some of the other apps that we would uh, potentially see in, in web and on desktop. We see them here and we'll just go into shifts here as well. All right, so when you load this again, you're going to see your shifts. Uh, this is very employee centric, if you will. Uh, in this case, we've got no shifts for this user. We can get into requests. Uh, again, that was right from the uh, top of the menu here. We can see our requests. So as a manager, we would see requests that our teammates are making uh, as well. If you are an employee and you want to make a request here, you can do your swap or offer shift. That would be between two colleagues and swap shifts. And then this is where you would re request time off. And again, very, very similar to what we would have seen uh, on the web or desktop experience. Is it all day? When does it start? When does it end? Uh, and then get, you give some notes to your manager and you send it off that way. OK, as well as a manager here, we would see our completed request approvals. 
if we were an individual employee, we would just see how if we made a request for time off, if it was approved or not, um, the app just files it under completed, if you will. OK. We can go into our open shifts. So again, this is that schedule that we have for this week. These are all of the open shifts that we can go and, and pick from. So maybe this user wants to go and grab Thursday. Uh, that would have been next. That would be next Thursday. We can go ahead and request that. OK, and because Patty's the manager of herself, she'll just have to approve. Uh, she'll just have to approve that. OK. And let me just get back. So again, open shifts, any of the color coding that you would have applied uh, as a team owner, as a team lead, any of the color coding, any of the shift notes, any of the tasks, any of the break times that would all show up under these. So again, we made that task for sweeping the floor between 8 and 815. We added the note about uh, fix outstanding work orders. Again, anything that you do on either the mobile or the desktop or web experience, everything's going to show up always the same. Right. So now we can see the screen is refreshed and Patty has uh, some time upcoming next week. She has a shift for order picking in the warehouse. OK. The last thing I want to show you on the mobile side is the time clock experience. And again, as a team owner, as a manager, as a business owner, you do have the ability to say uh, if you want to collect GPS coordinates, if you want to know where your employees are when they're starting the clock and when they're ending the clock, uh, that is certainly there. Again, off by default, but something you can turn on in the team settings. So this is what the time clock looks like. And again, I'm sure we've all taken the card and we've put it into that machine and it makes a loud screech. And if you don't line it up, your time prints over yesterday's time. And then you got to go to Debbie and payroll and get her to sign something that you messed up. So this is a really good way to sort of leave all of that in the past. Uh, here's our current time. And you got to you got to press and hold this button for just a second so you don't inadvertently start. And so you can see here now, OK, we are in this team. We have clocked in. Uh, we're not requesting the GPS location so that we don't see anything about that here. You can see. Time is rolling. Uh, I've started my shift and there's my count up. If I wanted to take my break, um, you know, 25 seconds into my shift, I would just hold down the break button and now my break is counting. So it stops the clock on my shift counter and it's started a break counter here. So let's only take a few seconds of a break. We'll stop our break. You can see now our shift timer starts counting up again. So we've uh, we're back on the clock, if you will. Maybe we take another break, you know, we're going to make a Timmy's run, whatever it happens to be. Uh, you can control all of these things here through the app rather than keeping a log in a notebook and you dump coffee on it, rather than keeping a list in Excel, rather than doing something else on your phone that, you know, if you lose your phone or um, your phone gets taken by your kids and the notes app gets deleted, whatever it happens to be. Again, with the advantage of using something like this time clock in shifts with teams is this is all going back to the cloud. This is all going back to your company. And again, access is all controlled by uh, your corporate identity and, and your subscription. So some pretty cool stuff here. We're going to end our break. We're going to end our shift. We get a timesheet. And so again, uh, you can see all the different things that were going on, all of our quick breaks and what we have to do. Before we send our timesheet to our manager, we do have the ability to edit it if we want to. Um, maybe something recorded wrong or we forgot to, to turn off our break and we ended up taking a seven and a half hour break. Uh, you can go and make those edits here in the mobile app before sending your timesheet off to your boss. But if we want to go ahead and submit this, we're confirming it. We get a reminder. Are you sure you want to confirm it? There's no backing out and away we go. Now our manager is going to get our timesheets and that's going to get logged in again that Excel sheet that I showed you uh, quite earlier in the hour. Um, you know, payroll would receive that and have all of your breaks, all of your time accumulation, uh, all of your shifts for the week if they wanted to send that out for payroll processing. OK. So there we have it. That's pretty well. 
the shifts mobile experience. Uh, we'll take a quick look at questions. Any questions related to the mobile app? And then we'll just open questions up wide open. Uh, Alex? Uh, no, no questions for the mobile app. So we're caught up on this side. Um, so last call for any uh, burning questions that you have, if it's related to the mobile app or anything else, please get them into the Q&A right away. All right, as the questions come into the Q&A module, we'll just to wrap up a few things uh, before the top of the hour, before 11 o'clock, that is, sorry. Uh, this presentation and all of our weekly webinars and Modern Workplace live training sessions on Fridays are presented by Clear Concepts and our Modern Workplace group. Uh, this is basically a special team that we have inside of Clear Concepts that's really dedicated to training, enabling, and supporting your Modern Workplace journey. And that really has to do with Microsoft 365 cloud apps, getting your business away from paper based processes, digitally transforming again, like we've seen today. Um, those timesheets that you pin up on the bulletin board, there's really a better way. There's a more secure way and there's an easier, faster way to to do those types of things. So that's what Alex and I focus on on a day to day. If you'd like to know more about what we're doing, couple different places to check us out. Visit moo.ca and again that's for a high level look at uh, our modern workplace program at Clear Concepts. If you think your organization would benefit from some additional training, content, um, access to, to our experts and some of the services that we offer, again check out moo.ca for a review of that. If you'd like to follow us along on Twitter, what we post typically are really insightful quick tips for all of the different apps and services inside of Microsoft 365. You'd be surprised at some of the features that are less well known or kind of hidden by Microsoft that can save you two or three minutes a day each and every day. And so again, we post those out on Twitter and the Twitter handle is at Modern Work PLC. Just a quick note on our upcoming webinar. Uh, this is next week again always at f always on Fridays and always at 10 a.m. Uh, Alex and I are going to round up our top tips for Microsoft Teams We're kind of keeping it in Teams family again. Uh, what we aim to do with this session next week is skip a lot of the PowerPoint, skip a lot of the presentation stuff, jump right into Teams and we're kind of going to do a fun rapid fire back and forth experience where Alex and I share some of the stuff again, some of the things that maybe Microsoft is hidden, some of the features that are really, really new and not well known yet, and some of the things that'll save you some time each and every day uh, as you and your colleagues get more familiar with Microsoft Teams. So registration for next week's session is coming out soon by email, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back next Friday for that. If you wanna invite your colleagues, if, if you're starting to return to work and, um, you want some tips there as well. Again, if you want to leave us some feedback, if you want to drop a question in the Q&A right now, we'll make sure that we build that into our presentation next week. Oh. And again, there's that link for webinar feedback, clearconcepts.ca slash webinar feedback. Again, suggest future topics. If there's something in office.com that you see that you're not quite sure what it does, drop us a line, um, leave us a note, and we'll be sure to customize some of the upcoming content for you. But other than that, thank you very much for joining in today. And uh, Alex, we'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Ryan. I'm excited for the webinar next week. I really hope the allergy season is over and done with by then so I can actually breathe and speak and articulate a little better than I can today. Ryan, we did have one more question um, I just wanted to touch on because I thought it was a really good one. And it's, can we add users to shifts who are not in Azure? Uh, yes, you should be through the way of guest access, be able to add uh, users there into your, now they'll have to belong, they'll have to be guests in a team, and then you would create the schedule for that team. On their side, they'll be able to use the shifts app in the web experience and teams, 
and I'd have to double check. I'm going to go with my gut and say they'd be able to install Teams on their mobile device. They'll need a Microsoft account, so an Outlook or an at Live or an at Hotmail email address with a Microsoft account, and then they should be able to get into the Teams mobile app if they want that experience as well. Right. Great. Uh, that's it for questions. Um, for this live session. So thank you again, everyone, for all of your great questions. Thank you for attending on this Friday afternoon, Friday morning, sorry, it's only 11 o'clock. And uh, hope to see you next week. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing uh, your feedback and your suggestions for um, topics next week during our uh, Teams demo. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great weekend and we'll talk to you later.